Right, ready? Mm -hmm. Yes. Hi everyone, welcome to Meeple Mayhem. This is our channel. Are you laughing? I'm not. Why do you have to stop? Because you're laughing. You're flowing. Yeah, and then I hear you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Ready? Yeah, I don't need to. I'm not really. I'm not really. I'll, I'll say one word in this intro. You're just um, me. Ready? Oh, you, yeah. <laughs> Go. Hi everyone, welcome to Me for Mayhem. This is our channel all about board games, board games. And more board games. In today's video, we're doing our top five family board games of 2022. Yep. Don't... Be... don't interrupt me, the people would mind about this already. <laughs> What are you you doing? interrupted me there. All right, sorry, go on. We don't know each other's list as usual, and we're both doing our top five each. So there'll be ten games in total. That's me now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. These will be based on games that are for family kids. We have a six, six and seven. seven year old. Oh, <laughs> six and a seven year old. So we we play these with them. So we base it sort of that well, higher age range as well. There's some games that we play. Well, we we enjoy as just adults, but yeah, our seven year old daughter plays. Um, a lot of like advanced games, so of Burgundy, she can play like Castles of, of Burgundy, Deep. Laws of Waterdeep. We've just got her into Wild Serengeti, um, okay. Silver Bullet. So some of these games, like we don't go by the age on the box. It's just on what they can play. Yeah, these are family um, games to us. These are we, we, we as a family we play these games, and yeah. these are our favourites. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the the age on the box might be higher than six and seven. These are just ones that we play Let's with see. them, and they understand well. Yep. Um, and they're fun. And they're fun, yeah, we enjoy them as much as the kids. Do you want to go first, as usual? Yeah, I'll go Start first. Off with trash. So, my number five um, is Sonic Super Teams. Good game. Yeah, good really game. good game. We have quite a few different race games, um, but we best. got this one for our son for his birthday this year, and um, it was like exclusively to game, I think. Yeah. But Which is a UK. Like video game store shop, yeah, and it's a uh, it's a really good game, really fun game. Yeah, it's really fun, really simple. You basically there's a really fun mechanic. Game. So you're basically trying to race around a Sonic track, and you get a pair of characters, and both of your characters have to pass the finish line to win. But what's cool is when you get dealt a card, you get dealt everyone's cards. So you have loads of kind of cards, and your black team, red team, blue team, or yellow team, and you get dealt all, and they're all different amounts of movement on them. And basically, you have to play a card. Sometimes you have to play other people's cards. But what you want to do is there's spikes and there's rings on the board. If someone's on a spike, no matter what number card you play, they only move one. Yeah. But then if there's rings on the board, it doubles the, the movement. So you're always trying to sort of work out getting rid of people, other people's sixes when they're on spikes. Or yeah. also there's loops. There's the Sonic loops that he does in the game. Um, if you are ever on that and you can't make it all the way around, you go back to the start. So it's always good always yeah. to, to burn sort of cards on that. And yeah, it's just really, really, just really fun, really simple, really fun. We've showed this to loads of people, and they all yeah. love it. There's a special um, ability deck as well, so that can yes. counter. Um, what is it? Counteract. Yeah, the, the spikes. So counteract the loops. You could play a six when someone's on a spike, thinking, "Ha! Like I'm wasting your and six." And they can play and a non-spike non yeah. thing and move anyway. So yeah, yeah. it's just a yeah. really good game. Simple. And you've got these awesome little Sonic minis, like awesome little Sonic minis. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just our, our kids love this. They absolutely love it. It's definitely their favourite race game. Yeah, and we, we, really, we, we played like thirteen times. Out of the family race games we have, and we have quite a few of them. Right. I think it's definitely Camelot's pretty sick. Coming up is cool, but that's more like it is a, a race game, game. It's a betting yeah, game. Yeah, this is more. You're different. actually playing the cards to yeah. race. Yeah, I suppose so. I think yeah, this yeah. Is yeah, because we had Jamaica, and we've got rid of a couple. We had we had downforce. Downforce, which was a bit. Um, not that it was all right. We've got. We like Jamaica. Jamaica's good. And we've got yeah. Pax and Co, which is Co, which, which is, is like all a bad right. Build a race game, which is it's fun. I like that. That's one good as well. As well but um, you're definitely Sonic. But it's not in my top five. But it's in this. It's a good game. All right, my number five. Why are you staring at that for? I'm waiting for you to give me number five. I'm not scared now. Number five is Cryptid Calf. Okay. <laughs> no, you're top five. Huh? You'll have to see. The hell, man. Number five, Cryptid Calf. Um, this is an awesome... Uh, I don't know what it would be. So basically, you, you're in a restaurant and you, you're trying to serve food to customers. You're going to serve <laughs> different sandwiches. Eyes. It's like a worker placement type thing. You're placing your worker onto the ingredient that you need to get in order to yeah, build in your a sense, but customer's a, ear recipe. But there's a cool mechanic on that as well. So where you pick your food up from, there's free spaces and you can 
put your person in the thing in space. But sometimes it's good to go second or third because then you can jump people, you can pay to jump the queue. But if no one goes there, you can't pay because you can only pay to jump over other people. And that's a really, really fun mechanic. It's just really funny. Our work's amazing. It's, like, it's really cool, like monstery stuff. There's loads of weird little ingredients. We've got like a little mini expansion that gives you all your workers are actual little monsters. Loads of different characters. Yeah. Um, and just fun. Yeah, we played this loads. I would play this without the kids as well as with the kids. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's a really, really good game. You're just sort of trying to, on your, where, where your customers come in, they start in green. And every round, if you haven't fulfilled their thing, they, they keep going down and get less and less victory points until they uh, end up leaving and you get minus victory points. And then you also have to a little bit of set, set collection. So each customer's got a little symbol. And if you catch, if you get a free of the same symbol, then you get to get extra points. And yeah. Yeah, I really love this game. No, you love this game. It's one of like, it's not obviously even in my top fifty, but it's one of my favourite games. Um, but um, yeah, good yeah, game. I would play this about. The yeah, kids, good game. No, really good game. Solid game. Really good game. You are number four. My number four is Monsters on Board. <laughs> I knew this was gonna happen! What's he doing it for? <laughs> <laughs> What's he doing it for? Is it number four? I knew I knew you was gonna go mad at this. <laughs> Disgraceful. I knew this was gonna be you was not gonna be happy with this choice, but my number four is monsters on board. So Jason, this is probably his number one. Um <sighs> Disgrace. Disgraceful. Oh. Right. Well, anyway, Monster on Board is this really amazing um, dice drafting game, and you play as like these monsters in a hotel, and you're trying to put on a Halloween party, and you're trying to collect juice, but basically it's all about, there's like loads of little mini puzzles going on, that you're moving people around to collect little extra bonuses and get them to the end to score points. You're then moving dice into a thing, into like a little board where you're trying to complete end game stuff, and then you're, even on there there's like little... It's like a little mini game where you're trying to up your dice to make sure you've got all your other dice covered. And just loads and loads of little mini, make it all colourful. It's all very Hotel Transylvania. Yeah. And just just an awesome, awesome game. It's a big old game. Like, it takes up a lot of space. It does. And there's a lots of different, like, ways to score Oh, loads. Points. And you're always like, picking up more end game like cards. One, it's not one route Yeah, to, yeah. To and, like, in. there's a really way... The way they use a the dice is amazing. So the dice is used for three different ways. So it's used for its colour where you move people around. It's used for its number for doing puzzles within the end game stuff. And it's also used for its symbols to do more like stuff and gain bonuses. Yeah. Um, we've got the Kickstarter edition, which is like really, really cool upgraded minis and and extra bits and stuff like that. It's really, really good. But no, I could play this game every day. I love this yeah. game. Me and Phoenix have played this game on our own. Yeah. And our daughter Seven, and she loves it. There is a simple, we don't play a simplified version of her, but there is a simplified family version for even younger kids. Yeah. Where it takes out a lot of the like excess puzzle stuff. Because some of the puzzles can be quite like, like brain, you have to, because when you're laying your dice, burner. yeah, you only uh, you only can lay them in the left hand side, so it's quite not complex, but it is definitely something like. Yeah, oh. it's definitely got quite a bit of thought. To, yeah, thinking, it's very, very, very thinking. If you was to go like, if you're trying to strategy, like, yeah, if you're trying to go over like, for full and, scores, like, yeah, cause your end game card is worth fifty points if you yeah. can do it. It's hard, yeah. but if you can do it, it's worth fifty points, and um, yeah, just an amazing game. Yeah, really good game. It's gracefully at level four. I'm intrigued to see what's above it. Four. Well, you can see, soon. My number four. Calm down now. My number four is Flamecraft. Okay. Um, it's another awesome game that I would play without the kids. It's an awesome family game if you want something on the lighter side. Yeah. You basically, this is like worker placement again. You basically like got a little dragon village and you're placing these dragon cards into the village to collect like victory points and collect more resources to complete cards to, to get more victory points. Um, Again, we've got the Kickstarter edition. It's got awesome metal coins and awesome yeah. little dragon minis. The art's really fun. Our daughter loves this. She plays this on her own as well. Our son usually needs a bit of help, but his attention span is like zero. Zero, so yeah. That's the problem. Anything over four seconds and he's bored. If we go out to play board games at like the board game cafe, he's, he's fine. But, but he's got home, temptation. He's got too many other things he wants to do. Too much to Lego do. or Switch games. Yeah. But yeah, it, Dragon Ball is an amazing game. It's a good one. It's quite a popular one, I think. People, those people fell in love because of the art, I think, and stuff. But yeah, yeah, really, really good game. Solid game. That was my number four. Okay, my number three is Mountains Out of Molehills. Okay, that's a lot. Why are you good. doing that face like that? Good game. Really good, good game. game. This is the one, again, it's like a good hidden gem. This is, um, yeah. I don't hear a lot of people Anyone talk about, about this. So. And we're in a couple of like the kids' board game groups. I never hear people mention this. No. This is sort of like, it's got this awesome 3D 
board. So basically, you get, you get the board, and you get the big pillars, and you've got like another top board. And you're basically playing moles around the bottom board. You're moving, it's a... Like underground. It's a programming. It's a programming game. game. So you program your moves, and you're moving your moles. And you keep bumping into each other, and into rocks, and getting each other's way. But basically, as the mechanic works, as you move along, the ground above pushes up. So you get these little like mole hills that you keep putting on top of each other. And in this, whoever owns the bottom mole hill, obviously has been pushed up, gets the points. And then every single round, you count up how many points there are per level, including everyone else's. And yeah, you're just trying to battle it out. It's just a really, really fun programming game. And you can topple yeah. each other's hills if they get to a... Because each round, you can only go a certain height. And if they ever go above, or you can choose to topple them, you can move them. Then you get to put the... the Mole hills on top of others. Yeah. So if you own one at the bottom and you topple someone else's, you can just stack yours up and get loads of points. Um, yeah. Yeah, really, really good game. And again, it's like crazy here than Jim. Yeah, it's a really good I game. Never hear like, like I, I never hear it get spoken about like ever. <laughs> ever. I've never and seen anyone mention it ever. It's, it's such a good game. Um, you can obviously as well because it's programming and you pick your moves before you actually take your turns and everyone else takes their <laughs> no, turns. You can end up blocking wall. people. And you can end up against a wall for four turns yeah, just walking into it. Yeah, and you'll just waste it. your turn. So, yeah, it's just Because really... when you... There's a cool mechanic. So people can lay rocks in front of you as one of their cards. And if they lay a rock in you, when you hit it, you have to roll a dice. And that dice then tells you where you're next facing. And that's what I mean. You can end up like literally facing the wrong way. You don't play three cards into a wall and it's, it's, yeah. it's really fun. Really, really fun game. Yeah. My number three is a new game we got for Christmas. Okay. But I fell in love with it instantly. Right. Which is going to sound horrific as I'm a full grown toad man. <laughs> but My Little Pony. Okay. <laughs> Adventures of Equestria. Um, this is a deck build, like a pure deck building co op game. Um, we love Stardew Valley with our daughter. Yeah. She loves playing that. And then we played this with her. And it's just, this is amazing. It's amazing. It's a solid, solid deck builder. Yeah. A co op. So you're basically playing My Little Ponies. They just try and build your deck to try and complete, you have to complete three hurdles and then one main task. Mm -hmm. There's cards that throw in because you've got these, you're racing against these clouds and as these clouds build up, they sort of make stuff harder and give you bad things happen to you. And there's loads of different things to do. You're trying to collect these little sugar cubes and you've got locations on a board that you can go to and you've got to pay movement for them. And it's just loads, there's loads going on. And for yeah. a kid's game, it's amazing. And the little sugar cubes in it are really cool. Like yeah, it's the just components little cool, are really yeah. good and um, it's really colourful. And but yeah, yeah, for like a co-op deck builder, it's for me. I, I was like, this is this is amazing. Yeah, like, I really enjoyed it. It's something as well I would play. Yeah, I was a bit worried. I was a bit worried about the theme wise. I was like, oh, this is gonna be rubbish. But that is amazing. I literally fell in love with it. Yeah, really good. I love my little pony. <laughs> but yeah, that was my number three. My number two is Flamecraft. Okay, number two, yeah. Yeah, Ooh. I really enjoyed this game. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. It's a really good game. We've played it like loads of times. Yeah, loads of times. Yeah. Now, yeah. And we played it just us as well. I think we have played yeah, it. We have played just played us. It yeah, just us. Yeah. Really yeah, good, good game. Yeah. Really, really good game. It was one of uh, the best of the year. One of my favourites. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, good game. Right. My number two. Mountains on Mo Mountains <laughs> out on Mole Hills. Again, okay. just a really good game. I love this game. I would play this all the time as well. Uh, we don't get this out enough. No, yeah, this is a really good game, and just like, it, like if people would ever see you play, it's quite striking because I said like when the board's up, it's like this, and you've got loads of things on top of it, and yeah, just really, really good fun game. Really good. Game. It's a bit chess like because you're sort of trying to as you're playing, not, oh, not chess like because it's, sort of, it's on like a checkered board sort of thing, but then you're trying to always go back on yourself and underneath other people to keep raising your mole hills and you're trying to plan. Just I would have said that's chess line. No, it's not chess line. No. I, no, I suppose terms. yeah, wrong term. It's just got a checkered board, isn't it? <laughs> Right, your number one. My number one is Cryptid Cat. Oh, it's a Cryptid Cat, <laughs> number cryptid one. Cat. Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah good that's game. why I looked at you funny yeah. because I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, solid, solid game. Really, really good yeah, game. Really Again, we've played this a tons of time. We even take it to our board game cafe. Yeah. and they've been like, oh, what is that? Because we have rival restaurants as well, which is another like similar game you're building your own. Yeah, it's like an adult more a bit. recipes. Mm. But we always pull like go to Cryptocraft more yeah. over rubber restaurants to play. Yeah, um, I would. I would actually. Yeah. Rubber restaurants is fun, but Cryptocraft, I just I really enjoy Cryptocraft. I like the whole theming of the, the game theme of, of awesome. like completing your customers uh, recipe like yeah. orders and getting the recipe ingredients and. Because you also have special. You have a manager card and a special card. But once per game, you can swap 
if you've got you like a spot, really yeah. really good scoring one you can put it to the front of the queue again and sort yeah, of mix and match you usually try to focus on like the first one that comes out but then it gets to a point where you, know, I need you need to, to just on the scrap other. that one yeah. and focus on the other one so you get better points for the higher value because there's also these bad cards that come out so half the time when you're pulling customers out you can yeah. pull these bad cards that don't let you pick up a certain ingredient yeah, in that round and it's a yeah. pain you're like oh, I really need that to finish that <laughs> now it's going to go a whole nother turn so yeah, yeah. That's, that's really cool yeah, yeah I love yeah. that game it's a good game and your number one is <laughs> My number one is Monsters on Board. <laughs> this game's amazing. Excellent game. I don't know why it's number four. It's disgraceful. No, I I've got a feeling like you've got some sort of vendetta against this. No, I knew he was going to say that. I definitely feel like you prefer this game a lot more than I do. And I do like the game. I love the game. It's really good. But it's amazing. I don't know. I just think in with the kids. The kids love this. One, yeah, they do. Love Phoenix love this game. Yeah, I know. But I just think. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I just think no. Fair enough. <laughs> I, do, I do like the game. It's it amazing. made it in my uh, my personal top fifty, which is is good. Yeah, yeah, but it was horrifically low. Yeah, but it's still good. We have three hundred games. That top so, fifty is like unacceptable. It's just that you try it. That is a game. Go and try that game. It's amazing. Yeah, it's, really it's good. impossible to get, but try it. <laughs> it's a really good game. Done. Yeah, you carry on talking about your number one. No, I've talked like, about it. It's one. just an amazing game. It's just it's a it's they're so I, I quite like a puzzle game. I've realised this. I love like calicos and Miyabi and stuff like that, like real puzzly little games. And this is like a huge board game with a like a couple of different puzzle elements. Yeah. And it's just really, really fun. I really enjoy the puzzle in this one. Yeah. It's really fun. And it's got coloured dice. Yeah, the the, cars. the meat the meeples and components and stuff are really good. I've just started painting ours as well, so yeah, which is cool. So it'll be even better. Yeah, really painted. Good. Yeah, so, yeah. That's it. So that was our top five family games of twenty twenty two. Um, we hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please hit the like and subscribe button. And uh, that's it. yeah, happy new year. Yep. Bye. Bye.